All right, so as I've already indicated, moment is essential to help us describe the shape of our random variables, okay? So by definition, moments are a set of statistical parameters used to summarize a probability distribution, specifically to derive the shape of a random variable, which include skewness and ketosis. Um, basically, we know that the mean shows where most of the data points are being clustered. The variability in the distribution of a random variable is captured by the variance or standard deviation, right? While the skewness and ketosis coefficient helps us to describe the shape of the random variable, okay? Now let's take a look at the types of moment. Um, the first one is known as moment about the origin. So the kth moment about the origin of the distribution of random variable x is given by the expression in equation five. So this is going to be the expectation of the random variable raised to a certain power, which is k, okay? So um, once your random variable is desperate, you use this expression. And um, if the random variable um, x is continuous, then use the second expression, okay? So the first moment of the probability distribution about the origin is the mean of the distribution which is given in equation six, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at the second type of moment, known as moment about the mean. So the kth moment about the mean or the kth central moment of the distribution of a random variable x is given by the expression in equation seven. So this is going to be the expectation of, this, of the kth deviation between the random variable and its mean. So once a random variable x is, is disparate, you use this expression, and if it's continuous, you're going to use the second expression, okay? All right, so um, the second moment about the mean of the distribution of random variable is the variance of the distribution which is given by equation eight, okay? We know this from um, measures of dispersion from our previous tutorial that the variance is basically equal to this, okay? Then in here, um, the second moment about the mean is similar to the variance, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at this remark. The third standardized moment about the mean is called the skewness of the distribution and has a coefficient which is given by equation nine, okay? Now, when we talk of skewness in statistics, it's, it is a measure that studies the degree and direction of departure from symmetry. In other words, I can say that skewness is a distribution having an equal shape on either side of the center or peak value, okay? Now, to the best of my knowledge, um, when the skewness coefficient is within the range of minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5, then the distribution is said to be approximately normal in shape, okay? However, when the skewness coefficient is greater than plus 0 0.5, then um, we have a positively skewed distribution. And if the skewness coefficient is less than minus 0 0.5, then we have a negatively skewed distribution, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at this remark. The fourth standardized moment about the mean is called the ketosis or the distribution and has a coefficient which is given by equation 10. Now take note of this. This side is given as a ketosis coefficient. Once we subtract three from this, then you obtain the excess ketosis, which is often used in comparing the ketosis coefficient with that of a, with that of a normal distribution, okay? So, um, to the best of my knowledge, again, once um, when the ketosis, or let me use excess ketosis here, when the excess ketosis is approximately zero, then we have a mesoketic distribution, which means that the thickness in the curve is normal in shape, or the taste of the distribution seems to be um, normal in shape. Um, um, when we talk of ketosis, by definition, it, it's described the thickness in a curve, okay? That is, we are, we are looking at how heavy or light the taste of the distribution will look like, okay? So once your SS ketosis is approximately zero, then you have a mesoketic distribution, which means that the taste of the distribution is um, normal in shape, okay? Now, when the SS ketosis is greater than zero, then we have electroketic distribution, which basically means that the thickness in the curve is high and thin or we have a tail that is thinner than a normal distribution. Now, once your SS ketosis is less than zero, then we have a platicated distribution. 
which also means that the thickness in the curve is flat and spread out or the taste of the distribution seems to be um, we have a, a tail that is heavier than a normal distribution okay all right so now let's jump into moment generating functions so why moment generating functions the moment generating function is a function that generates moment okay now you can go back if you take a look at this um the test standardized moment and of standardized moment you can see that the power is becoming large as the power becoming large sometimes integrating or computing this may be, may be very tedious okay so with the help of um, moment generating function you can actually compute um, higher order moment as well okay so it's very vital to help us to basically compute higher order moment okay all right so um the moment generating function of a random variable x is given by the expression below. So this is the expression for moment generating function of x and it's given in this form. Now the variable yet t is, to the best of my knowledge, is, is just a kind of a dummy parameter which belongs to a closed interval in which the moment generating function is differentiable a finite number of times when this is set to zero, when this parameter t is set to zero, okay? So when your random variable x is displayed to you this expression, um, if it is continuous, you're going to use the second expression, okay? All right, so um, let's take a look at an example. A continuous random variable y has a probability density function PDF given by the expression below. We want to find the moment generating function of y. So how do we do this? So we know that the moment generating function of y can be expressed in this form. And we can also have it in this form because now our random variable y is continuous. So there is an integral part. So we input um, that this our density function, this is a um, moment generating function. And this is our density function. So once we try to simplify, we can have it in this form. And also we write it in this form, right? And once we integrate, we obtain this, which can also be written in this form. Then we try to um, input the values, we obtain this, okay? All right. So let's take another example. A discrete random variable x has a probability mass function, PMF, given by um, the expression here. So we want to find the moment generating function of x. How do we do this? Um, so um, the moment generating function of x can be expressed in this form now because it is discrete, we are going to use the summation part. So we have it in this form. So we try to replace of f of x with the PMF, right? And we can rewrite it in this form by including like things. And if we know from binomial um, expansion that this is equal to this, then we can say that the moment generating function of x which is in this form can also be written in this form, okay? Based on this binomial expansion. Very, very, very simple to do, okay? All right, so um, let's take a look at this theorem. If the moment generating function of x exists, then for any positive integer k, the moment generating function is the k derivative of the moment generating function with respect to parameter t, okay? Now this may not look nice or may, may seem to be very difficult but once we take an example it's very quite easy to do or compute okay all right so based on this term let's take an example a continuous random variable y has a PDF given by the expression below i want to find the mean and um, variance of y okay so um, given that the moment generating function of y is, is given this form, right? We know this from example 13, we obtain this, okay? So um, we know that once we take the first derivative, we're going to obtain this, which is going to give us that. Once we take the second derivative, we are going to obtain this based on the theorem, okay? Theorem 3, we're going to obtain this. Now, once we replace t with zero, the first moment, right, derivative is, is similar to the um, expectation of the random variable, okay? This is similar to the moment of other origin, okay? The first moment of other origin. 
and um, once we replace t with zero for this part, equation two, we obtain the second moment about the origin, okay, which is also in this form. Now we need this to help us compute the variance. So with the variance, we know that's given by this expression where this is the mean, right? So we replace this by that, which is two out of nine, minus the mean squared, which will give us one out of nine, okay? Very quite easy to do, okay? All right, now let's take a look at this. For example, a discrete random variable x has a PMF given by um, this expression. We want to find the mean and variance of x. We can actually find the skewness and cases as well, okay? I just want to restrict ourselves to only this part. So um, let's take a look at the solution. We know that the moment generating function of x is given by this. From example 14, we obtain this. Okay, so you can check that if you have skipped that. And we know that uh, once we take a first derivative based on theorem and three, we obtain this. Once we try to replace t with zero, we are going to obtain the first moment about our origin, which is going to give us this, which will give us that, okay? Now, this one to take a second derivative, right, of this, we obtain that which will also give us that. So once we try to replace um, t with zero, we obtain the second moment about origin, which is given in this form, which is similar to this solution, okay? All right. Now, um, we want to find the variance of x. So we have this expression here, and we know the uh, expectation of x squared is this, we have it here. And this is the mean, which is 7.2 squared. Once you use a calculator to compute this, you obtain this result, okay? Very quite easy to do, okay? All right, so um, let's take a look at this theorem. Let x be a random variable with moment generating function. If, we can, if y is equal to ax, right, where a is a constant, then the moment generating function of I can be expressed in this form. So there's a proof to this. We know that the moment generating function of y can be expressed in this form. So in place of y, we put the value ax, right? We have ax here, so we put that. Once we try to group like terms, we have it in this form. So we can rewrite it in this form, okay? Very quite simple. Now let's take a look at another theorem, theorem five. If y is equal to a plus bx, and the moment generating function of x exists, then we can find, we can say that the moment generating function of y can be expressed in this form, okay? So there's a proof to this. Um, we know the moment generating function of y can be written in this form, okay? So this bracket is showing the expression of y. Once we try to multiply through by e raised to power t, we obtain this. Once we try to group like terms, we can have it in this form, which is similar to this, okay? Very quite simple to do. All right, so the last theorem, let x1, x2, to xn be independent random variables with moment generating functions, right? If y is the sum of these random variables, then we can express moment generating function of y in this form, okay? Because they are independent. We can actually have them as the product of their respective uh, moment generating functions. All right, so um, I think this will bring us to the end for this um, review. There's going to be a trial question. I'm going to leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out. Um, if you find value in today's tutorial, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.